Hi guys, so today is Wednesday and on Sunday my husband shot a 3x4 buck and he did it up on the mountain so he gutted him and up there brought him home skinned him out and we hung the meat up so today is Wednesday and we're processing him right now but I just wanted to show you a little bit of the processing we are by no means experts on anything this is just how we do it and I wanted to show people so they weren't so scared of doing things on their own um, some of the equipment that you have to have is, this is a homemade one, I think they're called stanchions, I'm not sure what they're called, but you have to be able to hang your meat up. And so all he did was skin it, um, used a sawzall to cut it in half here, and we've already brought the one front leg in the house to start cutting up and so next he'll just bring I don't know if he's going to do one side or the other but he'll just bring the next front leg or um, what we usually do is just cut like cut the rib cage part just do the next easy piece of meat and then um, bring that in the house and start cutting it up The other equipment you have to have is just a really good sharp fillet knife, cutting boards, um, bowls to put the meat in. This is the hamburger bowl. You need a scrap bowl and we're using a wearing pro to make the hamburger out of. Um, you don't have to but we're gonna try making summer sausage. And there's recipes for doing this, but this is just easier. The casings, disinfectant wipes, and um, the food saver bags to go with our food saver. And then also bleach, and I like Dawn dish soap. All right, he's gonna sh cut the other front shoulder off and we'll try to show you how he does it. Save that fat for the sausage and burger. All right, then we just take that whole thing in the house and cut it into little pieces. So then he just cut this piece off right there and you, the outer layer is hard now from sitting in the air so you just trim it off. The hard piece goes in the gut bucket which is another must have and then these pieces we just cut big enough to fit in the um, grinder and if you cut them too big you'll burn up your grinder so we just cut them in manageable sizes and then just keep going like this all the way through
Anything that you wouldn't want to eat, just throw away. I don't like weird stuff when you're eating hamburger and there's chunks of stuff, hard stuff. Okay, so next he's going to cut out the tenderloin, which is this right there. And he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's worried about being on camera messing things up for other people. But the point of my video is just to show people to get in there and try it because you won't know until you try. And not to be intimidated by it. If you mess it up, you can just turn it into hamburger. Trying to expose it, trying to dunk off. So that's it right there. The tenderloin and the back strap are the only parts that we really care about and try to do good. The rest of it, I think we pretty much make it into hamburger and sausage. I've never tried to do a roast or anything. I don't know if that would work out good with deer. Good chunk of it. There it is. All right, so now we're trying to get the back strap off, which is this this whole piece of meat going all the way down. We've got to separate it from the ribs or the backbone. You're going to get a job cut down in half. I may have already butchered the back strap. So maybe don't cut it in half. When you're doing it, just take the back strap out first and then cut it in half. Because that's the most important piece of meat on a deer. So we gotta trim that fat off to get it to come out there. But this is this is the piece. I ran out of room on my memory, so I had to delete some stuff and this is the other back strap. Yay. <laughs> we left 
left a little bit. Yeah. But this is cut crooked too, though. I didn't cut them in half. Okay. Yeah. So this is the spot where it comes from. If you can see the whole thing. All right. Now we're just trimming the fat off the stuff you don't want to eat. Right, so this is the back strap cleaned up and then you just cut it into little steaks. Doesn't matter how thick. I don't know if we know. It's going to be better <laughs> or thinner, I don't know. That's what you're trying to do with it. No matter what, it tastes good, so. And we just do the same with the other one. And these pieces are the tenderloins, and he said he's just going to cut them up and fry them. Because that's the way he likes to eat them. Alright, now that I got a big enough bowl of meat for hamburger comes my job. I use a plastic bag so that I don't get my hands all yucky. And... stick some meat up here. Um, it's really easy to burn up these machines. I had a one that attached to my um, KitchenAid mixer, stand mixer, and that got burned up. So don't just shove things in there and push it. Take it slow. So he just cut, I guess, the rib cage. I don't know. The rib cage off. And we wiped the counter down with bleach. So I guess on here you're just going to trim it until just get the meat off. Just cut the meat off. Try not to waste too much. And then all of this bloodshot. See the coagulated blood? We cut all of that off. All this dark right here. You don't need that. All right, when my bowl of hamburger is full, then I start wrapping it. It's nice to have a kitchen scale, but you don't need it. Sorry, I haven't used it for a while. <laughs> and you, oops. You just measure however much your family wants to eat. We usually, um, I like to use about two pounds of meat. That way I don't have to cook all the time. I have leftovers because I hate cooking. So I'll just measure this to two pounds and then get the bags out. 
And then I bought the bags that you make your own size with. They don't come pre-sized because they were on sale. I kind of like the other ones better. So that means that you have to seal them. So you just put it in here, put your lid down, shut it, put it on seal, and I'll show you. Well, that was next all bloodshot. All right, it helps when you have this part longer than you need because it has to stuff down in here for the vacuum seal part to work. After that, you just um, put a description on it and a date and then stick it in the freezer.